you will gain a further appreciation for the person you're dating if you can see why they believe those things. Hi there, my name is Nick Whitaker. I'm a pastor in Santa Barbara, California, and today I'm making a video assault to talk about a subject that I think everybody has to deal with at some point, and it's how to date through theological differences. Now, this can be a tricky one because I think initially some people think that they don't actually have to deal with this problem. But the reality is you will have to deal with it with everybody you date, with everybody you know at some point, whether as friends or as a, as a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a spouse, you will always have theological differences. And in a dating relationship, that can be especially difficult and complicated because in some sense, you're getting to know this person, you're deciding if you enjoy hanging out with them. And at a certain level, you're evaluating whether you're going to be able to marry this person. And guess what? The theological differences don't end at marriage. So let's, let's talk about what theological differences are in general, because I think that's a good place to start. Now, in my own ministry, when people ask about this, and I, you know, I live in Santa Barbara, California, and California in general has a lot of, uh, I would say diversity of thought, period, but especially among churches, because the culture is so, so pressing when it comes to what you should believe in general with things like men and women and sexuality and authority. A church in my denomination, which is the Presbyterian Church in America, I think widely considered somewhat of a, a conservative denomination, maybe somewhat's even the wrong word, but for those not in the U.S., you might know Tim Keller. It's, it's sort of that denomination, Reformed Presbyterian. You run into a lot of people who look at our denomination or have questions about why we believe certain things. And so I have to have this conversation often. And here's how I start the theological differences conversation. I believe there are two kinds of theological issues. There are dividing issues and there are defining issues. So dividing issues would be issues like infant baptism. They would be issues essentially that divide one group of Christians from another group of Christians. They are issues that you can disagree on and both be loving and kind and charitable and share Christian fellowship with one another. And the truth is that you have dividing issues that you believe on a certain side of, that you have friends and family that all believe on different side of, sides of. Everybody has dividing theological issues. So you have to learn to live with those. But then there are the defining theological issues. Those would be issues like the divinity of Christ, the resurrection from the dead, forgiveness of sins, the virgin birth. These are issues which define Christianity apart from, I would say, non-Christianity. Issues that if, so, if, if you stand on the different side of that issue with another person, you essentially practice a different religion. But even still in these issues, this calls for charitability and kindness and love. And so I want to read a little bit from the book of Romans that doesn't directly talk on the, the, the issue of theological differences in general, but go over, goes over the marks of the true Christian. So this is in Romans 12 here. I'm just going to read through verses 9 through, through about 18. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Now the over overwhelming note there, depending on who you are, you might see a different thing. You might see, okay, well, the overwhelming note is to live peaceably with all. Never be wise in your own sight. And you know, somebody else might look at that and say, well, you know, let love be genuine. I have to abhor what is evil and hold fast to what is good. So as a result, you might take your theological differences, whether they be dividing or defining, and you'll say, well, I'm abhorring what is evil by being confrontational and, and direct with people who I disagree with. Or you can say, well, I'm, I'm being humble and really allowing any theological differences. I don't need to tell you that the landscape of theological differences is complicated, and that the biblical wisdom on how to handle theological differences can be taken different ways. 
in some ways we are told to abhor what is evil that is absolutely true we're to stand up for what the truth is and at the same time we are called to be humble so how do we actually do this and how do we actually do this inside of a dating context well i want to take both sides there i want to talk about how do you be confrontational about theological differences and sort of stand ground on what you're convicted is the truth and how do you how do you be charitable and humble so on the first side, if you're dating somebody and you have a, a theological difference with them, I would say it's absolutely wise to bring up that conversation. To bring up the conversation about what you disagree about and ask questions. The last thing you want to do is approach somebody who has a theological difference with you and immediately start telling them why they're wrong, assuming that you know exactly why they believe what they believe. I certainly, especially in my early days of seminary, where I didn't know that I didn't know everything, I've lost a few friends over being exactly like that. So I would say have that conversation and seek to ask questions. So let's say, for example, the issue that you are trying to work through with somebody you're dating is, well, I'll, I'll use the one I used earlier, infant baptism, right? You might believe that we should be baptizing infants, they believe that you shouldn't. Instead of going after their viewpoint, ask why. Ask, ask not just like, why do you believe that as if it's wrong? Ask what, what is so beautiful about that to you? The reason I want to say that you should do this is, is because you, you want to gain an understanding and appreciation for the person and the reason that they hold their views. You're not dating a person on the basis that they believe a certain set of things. That only gets you so far. You will gain a further appreciation for the person you're dating if you can see why they believe those things, if you can see where that belief comes from. So for instance, let's say you hold a view that you should not baptize infants and the other person holds a view that you should. If you ask them why they think that's beautiful, you know, they could say, well, there's a rich and beautiful tradition of infant baptism and, and I follow along in that. Well, that might be a great answer for you because you also love tradition. And although you've arrived at different points, you, can, you both can recognize the beauty in tradition and history. Well, let's say they say, well, I just like it because babies are cute. Well, you just found out something about the person that maybe you're looking for a little more depth than that. Or maybe they say, I, <clears throat> I love infant baptism because of these theological principles inside of it and how it applies to the church. And maybe you're somebody who, who, who opposes infant baptism on theological principles as well. And you'll find that you, instead of creating a fight, have created a conversation about the appreciation of theological richness, that now you can both appreciate each other inside of that. You've confronted the issue, you've made your position clear, you haven't capitulated your views in order to be with this person, but you've actually started a conversation that grows the intimacy between you. That's a really good thing. So that I would say is on the side of confrontation. And as a complete like no go, do not try to convert the other person to your view. Whatever your view is, unless it's a defining issue, in which case it's a whole nother conversation about like, should Christians date non-Christians? You know, I, I would say if they're not a Christian evangelist, preach the gospel to them. But if they have a different theological view, your job in a relationship, whether that's a dating relationship, a marriage or a friendship, your job is not to convert them over to your side of the issue. In fact, what I'm suggesting is the opposite. Give them the opportunity by asking questions to display the beauty of their position to you. Give them the chance to, to sell it to you. By that method, you're actually getting to understand them a little more. You're finding out who they are as a person underneath the belief that they hold. And you're actually getting, you're, you're gaining capital in your dating relationship. It's extremely valuable. Now that's the, that's the confrontation side, you know, abhor what is false. You want to find out if somebody really believes the gospel. But then there's the humility side and that so far it depends on you get along with others. Let's say for instance, that you're dating somebody and they have very strong views about a particular theological issue and they, they're trying to convert you on this issue. They're trying to push this issue on you. And so you're finding it difficult in this moment to not be wise in your own sight because you, you don't want to just capitulate to somebody else's forcing their beliefs on you. And you're also finding it diff difficult to follow Paul's words of, so far as it depends on you, get along with other people because this person is picking a fight. Now, on one level, I would, I would point out if that's your position, look at the fact that this person by converting you or trying to convert you might be showing a level of disrespect that isn't 
that isn't something you want in a relationship, but let's say it's something you admire. Let's say you admire their, their truth telling and their forthrightness. I would almost suggest the same tact as, tact as the confrontational thing. I would say the, the wise path here in, in a position like that where you want to show humility is to continue to be curious. Ask continual questions. And if you want to push back, ask questions about why they don't believe what you believe. You say, okay, let's go back to the infant baptism answer. If they're really pressing you and saying, you know, it's shameful. It's shameful that you believe that we should baptize infants. They can't believe for themselves. You can ask the question like, well, why is that shameful? You know, why haven't you sought to understand my position a little bit more? Pressing them on the fact that they're assuming what you believe actually breeds room for a real conversation about respect and values and how, how you're seeing each other in a relationship. So I, I would say it's extremely vital on that front. Now, how, how can you practice this? Let's say you're not in a relationship and this is something you struggle with and you want to date somebody who believes what you believe. What I would say is practice this in your friendships, in your church and in your family as soon as you can. Find the time and space to have these conversations with other people about theological differences where you just ask questions. You know, the, these conversations are muscles. They need to be built. They don't come naturally because naturally we, we tend to be full of pride. Uh, we tend to want to be proven right or we're full of shame and we want to hide. So I, I would say find, find a way with the relationships you have in your life to practice these sorts of skills naturally. Somebody really wise once told me that if you look at sitcoms, the cause of every conflict in sitcoms at some level is always miscommunication. The reason that any, any story happens is that somebody did not communicate to another person. Somebody didn't say what they needed to say. And so because you don't want to find yourself in that situation anywhere in life, you don't want to have these unnecessary conflicts. I, I would say if you're, if you're wrestling with theological differences and thinking about dating, before you assume what's gonna happen or that it's not gonna work or that it's not gonna be a big deal, go have the conversation. Have the conversation and take the results of that conversation first to the Lord, but second to somebody who you trust more than yourself. You're not starting a debate here. You're starting, you're starting a bit of an investigation into how the other person handles conflict because believe me, theological differences will not be the most pressing conversation in a marriage that you have. That won't be the primary. You'll have conflicts about everything. And how they handle the theological differences conflict is gonna tell you so much about how they'll handle other conflicts. Now, ultimately, the convictions that you hold are precious, they're valuable, you're trying to seek and follow the Lord, and if somebody simply doesn't respect those, or you simply can't agree, and you're just dating, you know, maybe it's time to close it off. But if you are in a relationship where you have theological differences, that is not spelled death for the relationship. It can actually be really, really life-giving to find that you two from different traditions can both appreciate and love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength together, even if you disagree on particular issues. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Nick Whitaker, and I'll see you next time.